Well, well, well. We meet again, my most hated adversary. So, let's get this video started. Um, how do I start this off? First of all, I want to say this. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy a good laugh. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky person. I enjoy a great laugh every now and again. So, let's real quickly roll the film, or roll the tape like the Buttery Bros say, on all the good memes we've got these past couple days. Roll it. I do want to say thanks for everyone who reached out to me, whether you texted me and said, have fun, good luck, or whether you actually messaged me and said, have fun, good luck. I do appreciate it. So let's jump right, right into it, right? So 20.4, I'm sorry, 20.3 is 18.4. Um, I do want to real quickly say this is the idea that I'm not usually a pretty negative person. Um, there's nothing that really comes beneficial out of it. So I'm not gonna, you're not gonna see me sit here and say, hey, it's a stupid standard, or that's a dumb idea, or why are we doing this? Like, it doesn't matter how much you complain about the situation. Um, the one thing I have learned in this sport that I think is applicable to not only this sport, but a lot of things in my life, and probably in your life too. Because I personally think that there's a lot of good lessons learned that I have pulled from CrossFit, and this is one of them. And the thing, one thing I've learned is that you pay to play their game. And it's not, an, it sounds kind of negative and derogatory, but it's not really to me a derogatory quote, really. What I'm trying to say is when you pay your $20 to the open, you're paying to play their game. CrossFit HQ determines the rules, they make the rules, and they're in charge. And so um, I learned that kind of the hard way in 2018. Um, I was irritated, I was mad, I was really upset. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I realized. Probably took me a while. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't like the next night, but it took me a while to kind of realize that it doesn't matter how much I complain. It doesn't matter if I go on to Instagram and, and be a keyboard warrior, or if I go on to Reddit and I type up a, a huge paragraph on how I think it's stupid. It doesn't matter if I do it, if you do it, or anyone does it. Right? They make the rules, and whether or not we agree with it, it's their rules, and you have to come to learn to accept that. Now, you know, you would hope that maybe. Um, a quote is obviously like a wise man listens to counsel, right? So if you consider yourself wise, you will listen to constructive criticism or criticism from others. Um, that is something I have always taken to heart and always tried to do. Um, and sometimes I think it's really beneficial to have that in your back pocket and learn from it. Hold on, let me let my dog in. He's screaming at me. Come on, buddy. So anyways, I'm not going to cut this or edit it. It's not worth it. Anyways. So that's kind of my thought. It doesn't matter. My real quick, I want to say before we get started is the idea that it doesn't matter how much you complain. It's not going to change the situation. And it's the same can go for life, right? You can complain all day, all day about the situation you might be in, the situation in your job, the situation in your home, the situation in your family, your relationships. But really what it comes down to it is you have to go out there and change it. You have to figure out ways to get around it, ways to fix it, whatever the case may be. And the same can be applied to the CrossFit space. Like I think, like I mentioned, there's a lot of good things you learn in CrossFit that can be applied to your life. So, anyways, 20.4 or so 20.4, 18.4 is 20.3. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the standard. Okay, uh, the standard is what the standard is. Um, CrossFit HQ chose it, and so we're doing the standard. In 2018, I realized that. The standard, um, I wasn't going to be good at it, and so I made it a point in fact to make sure that if it came up again next year, I hoped it wouldn't, um, that I could uh, circumvent it or get around it or qualify even through it. Um, luckily, last year we had sure handstand push-ups, and if you were if you were in my house in 19.3 when they announced sure handstand push-ups without the standard you would have probably been cheerful because I, we were both cheering because we thought the standard was gone, it's back. Um, and But luckily, 
like I mentioned in the previous statement or the previous like last minute was the idea of if you're not good at something or you don't like the situation you're in, you have to go out and change it. And so um, the thing about the standard is uh, one way I can get around it or can actually do the push-ups to a degree is doing them on my fists. And that sounds really, really weird. Um, but I want to talk about two, actually three reasons why I think it's legitimate to use your fists. Now I want to, want to quickly caveat and say this, I have not emailed CrossFit HQ, okay? I haven't asked if this is legal, I just, I mean, it's either to me, either put up a really, really crappy score on my palms where I can't really do it, or do it on my fist, put up a maybe a decent score, and then if they decide that it's an uncommon movement, movement clause, then it's an uncommon movement clause and I'm kind of back to square one. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, well, you might as well try and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then I guess we're going to a sanctional. Um, I want to quickly say the three reasons why I believe you can use your fists. Okay. Number one, the number one reason why, and I'm going to read this to you actually, uh, as I messes up. Number one is in the movement standards of 20.3, we talk about the handstand push-up. And on slide eight of 19, we talk about at the bottom, the head must make contact with the ground. If the head and hands are on a different surfaces, the surface must be level. Makes sense. Um, the hands are on plates and if there's a pattern of the head, the blah, 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 blah. The idea is the hand has to be on the ground. Now, it doesn't say palms, it says hands. Uh, right, so if you look up the definition of hands, it's anything from the wrist up, um, which to includes your fingers and your um, knuckles. Um, the next concept is my second reason for it is the idea if, if we're going to measure our forearms, which also includes our middle knuckle and our knuckles, right? Because you measure from the forearm against the wall to your middle knuckle. If I'm going to measure this, then I should be able to use this. And you might ask yourself, well, that's not necessarily true then I will harken back to 2012 um, for the open in 2012.1. It sounds weird to say 12.1. In 12.1, we did seven minutes of uh, burpees through a six inch touch, okay? Um, I wasn't there that year, but I did it a year later, but I didn't do the open that year. Now, when, when they measured your six inch touch during that year, you measured from the tip of your fingertips above your reach. So you reach up as high as you can, six inches above your fingertips was where the rings or whatever you were gonna slap was at for the seven minutes of burpees. Um, when you measured six inches above your fingertips um, to the object, you were therefore able to use your fingertips obviously when you slap the object. So if it was above six inches above your fingertips, you obviously use your fingers to hit that object. You didn't use your wrist or your hand or your other side of your hand or your forearms. You use your fingertips because you measured from them. So if we're going to measure from our fingertips to touch the six inches burpees, then I, if I'm going to measure from my wrists, or I'm sorry, from my middle knuckle to my forearm, then I should be able to use my knuckle in the handstand push-ups. Now that's my logic. You may or may not agree with it, and that's completely fine. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna come out. It may not be a legitimate handstand push-up, and that's fine. Then I guess I'm gonna be going to a sanctional. In that case, I've talked to Filthy150, and we're talking to Pandaland. Um, I'm probably for sure gonna go to Pandaland. I just gotta get a visa, and that's the plan. There's not a whole lot to say about it, to be honest. Like, that's pretty much basically it. I will close it out, though, with some good memes, because you know, this has been pretty serious, but at the same time, I wanted to let you guys know, I still have fun. I still love the sport. Whatever comes out, comes out. I mean, yeah, am I going to be slightly upset? Of course. But I mean, like, that's human nature. But at the same time, like, you have to remember, this is a fun sport. If you're not enjoying doing this sport, then why are you doing it? Like, it, it's meant to be fun. And that's something that I learned many, many years ago when I... I told a story before when I had uh, a lane next to Jason Kalipa at the 2013 games. Or... 14 games. He told me, hey dude, never lose your passion for the sport and your ability to have fun. When this ceases to be fun, it ceases to be worth your time. Gonna keep that close to my heart. Appreciate Jason Kalipa, and we're gonna move on. Anyways, close it and out with some more memes. See you guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hudson. Whoa, whoa, whoa!